They are hidden in plain sight. They're if you know where to look. The relics of a nervous age. Yeah, there's very few of them actually left in place. Historian Felix Bennell says when World War II ended, a new war began. This event that never really had a distinct beginning, middle, or end, it was just this sort of period of unease. The Cold War, pitting the communist Soviet Union against the U.S. and other Western democracies, would dominate world politics until 1991. It was an arms race, and we thought at any minute, Soviet bombers would come flying over the horizon, dropping nuclear bombs on the lower 48. Air raid sirens sprouted across the American landscape, standing ready for attack. Fooling people into thinking we were being protected or we would have some knowledge before an attack actually happens. Roger Ferris remembers hearing this one blaring from Seattle's Finney Ridge in the 1960s. At noon on Wednesdays, when I was in elementary school. The weekly drills stirred up some of the local residents. Dogs all over Seattle howled and barked for 10 or 15 minutes after that one minute siren alert. Signs like these showed residents where they could hide from nuclear destruction. 40 years ago, there were fallout shelter signs everywhere. We found one here in Seattle's Capitol Hill and another in Pioneer Square. It might have been totally bogus, but it made you feel slightly better. So it opened in March of 1963 as part of the I-5 construction project. That's it doesn't it look like much, but under the freeway here in Ravenna is the first fallout shelter of its kind. The space had room for 200 people fleeing the radioactive aftermath of a nuclear attack. But this, in fact, is the only one they ever built. There are 12 underground ballistic missile sites across Washington dating back to the Cold War. They put a lot of time and effort into creating this infrastructure this 60-year-old, 60,000-square-foot 60, structure beneath rural Adams County is now used to grow cannabis. Hanford's B reactor provided plutonium for the second atomic bomb dropped on Japan and continued to produce the deadly substance until 1967. Public tours began a decade ago at this symbol of American ingenuity and the horrors of nuclear war. The reminders of troubled times are all around us. It's up to us to listen to their stories and learn.